All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Bugsy Drake from Below Deck Med. What's going on, Bugsy? How's it going? Good, good. I'm excited so, to be here. <laughs> yeah, we're so glad to have you. So you just mentioned you are in the Bahamas and you guys are dealing with a hurricane at the moment? Yeah, so we've just, we're just heading to Florida. There's a hurricane heading towards the Bahamas. Don't know if it's going to be there yet, but we are still shelter in Florida. Wow. What hurricane is it? I don't actually know if it's got a name yet, to be honest. I know they were calling it Hurricane 9, but well, it's actually a Tropical Storm 9. I don't think it's actually developed into anything just yet. Okay. Um, and I don't know if it will, but I think its name is 9. Got it. Okay. Wow. Cryptic, right? <laughs> really cryptic. So I want to talk about when you arrived on the boat. Let's go back to the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. Did you have any idea what went down with Lara when you got there? I had absolutely no idea and I didn't really ask too many questions. I just kind of like jumped into it. Obviously, I was really curious, but no, I had no idea what what exactly had gone down. So watching the season back then, what was your reaction when you saw her interactions with Hannah? I was absolutely horrified, to be honest. I couldn't really believe that somebody could get that hectic. <laughs> in uh, such a short amount of time working <laughs> with a new team. Right. So when you got to the boat, obviously, I, I feel as a viewer and a fan that you really swept in. Thank goodness for you. You really stepped up. And I think Hannah, despite your you know history with each other, was also very appreciative of you stepping into that role. Did you feel like you coming in really did save everybody's ass a little bit? I mean... Not like in the most humblest way, I think, yeah, it was probably a bit of saving grace that I came in. Yeah, no, absolutely. Especially because I think <laughs> the first charter that you came in on, the guests were pretty rowdy and demanding. It was definitely a really demanding charter and they were pretty rowdy. I think it worked out well and it was the right timing for me to come in and, you know, join the team and step the game up a little. Yeah, absolutely. So you obviously knew Hannah going into this, but what was your first impression of Jess when you met her? Bubbly and a bit ditzy. And I was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to deal with this season? Right. Did you feel offended at all by her saying that she was having trouble understanding you? Yeah, I was completely offended and taken aback, you know, a little bit later on in the season, kind of. And Jess obviously finding out about mine and Hannah's history, I feel like it swayed her opinion of me a bit. So I felt she had a completely different attitude to what I would have expected if, you know, she hadn't heard about me before. I was definitely offended a little bit because I feel like I speak really clearly and I, I don't think I've ever had anybody not understand me. Right. Well, I think the most offensive part is it's not like you were speaking too fast or you were speaking too quietly. I think she was kind of being like, I can't understand your accent. And you're a little bit like, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> No, exactly. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it. And the thing that was so ironic is that she can understand Rob perfectly fine, who I feel speaks really quietly. And I battle to understand him half the time as a South African, but she, she could understand him completely fine. That's, that's also why I think I got my back up a little bit about it. Right. No, that's a very good point because I've even noticed watching the show back that they do have to caption Rob a little bit more often because he's soft spoken, he has the accent and it's, you know, kind of mumbles a little bit sometimes. So I feel like, yeah, that's a good point. If she can understand Rob, she should be able to understand you. Probably in a lot closer proximity to her a lot of the time. So no, that's <laughs> a good point. In her ear. <laughs> <laughs> no, very, very true. I mean, what was your take on their relationship? Did you think that they were a cute couple? Were you a little bit like, this is just a boatman? I mean, I'm, I've am i always definitely been against boatmancers just from the past experience I've had. But, you know, if people want to do it, they're completely entitled to. Uh, I thought it was quite overboard in such a short amount of time. So I was very interested to see kind of like how it is all going to uh, like unravel. Well, so I do want to ask, because you do mention in an episode that you are a bit hesitant when it comes to dating and particularly boatmances, I think, because you have this fear of rejection. But where does that fear of rejection come from? Well, I think my um, idea on relationships per se, like 
separate from both mansers, let's say. I think that's where my fear of rejection comes in. It's, you know, I think I, I mentioned in one of, in the episode was that like I had my heart broken when I was 14 and I really didn't like that feeling and I feel like it has stuck with me. So I'm always very wary going into relationships. Like I want to make sure it's the real deal before I kind of open myself up to anything. Right, right. Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, sometimes, you know, when you go through something like that at such a young age, it does stick with you. But, you know, it definitely hasn't slowed you down from flirting with Alex this season. So what was that all about? <laughs> definitely not. I'm like a born natural flirt and a cougar, I might add, because Alex <laughs> is quite a lot younger than me. <laughs> I don't know. I like to have a lot of fun and you know, this season I came in as a second stew, a lot less responsibility. And I thought, you know, why not have a bit of fun with it? Alex is a cute guy. He's easy to get along with. And yeah, it's just, it adds like a bit of fun to the job. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I have loved Alex from the very beginning of the season. I thought he was so cute and so cool. And I love watching the way he flirts with you. And I want to get your reaction to watching back the first night out with the crew when you guys ended up in the hot tub and like, you didn't really remember what had happened. So what was that like to rewatch? <laughs> I was so embarrassed rewatching that. <laughs> I didn't actually, you know, it was the first time I'm seeing how I was acting. So I had no idea actually what was going to be shown on the show. And I was right. like, oh my gosh, what am I in for? Mom and dad, I'm sorry in advance. But yeah, I mean you know just from day one when I met him he's just such an easy like guy to get along with and I felt so comfortable around him which was which made it a lot a lot fun more fun right yeah no totally I think it's really cute to see you guys kind of just be playful you know right now we have like Rob and Jess who are in the throes of this you know summer love and it's just kind of <laughs> It's kind of fun to see you two be just a little bit more <laughs> playful and a little bit more low key. Like it's a nice balance, I think, on the show. But so what's definitely. your relationship like with Alex today? Oh, we speak often, like definitely every week we, we touch base. We have a really like banterous, so that's even a word. We like to banter with each other a lot. And yeah, I think we've got a really solid, solid friendship. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. I want to talk a little bit about the whole Las Vegas dinner with Chef Kiko. What do you think went wrong there? Oh gosh, I think so much went wrong. Watching it back actually just kind of opened my eyes to how how bad it actually was in the nicest possible way because Kiko is the loveliest human being I think I have ever met. Mm -hmm. He is just such a, a nice guy and he tries so hard, which I think is so important. And I think he was a little bit misled. You know, he obviously listened to Hannah because she's been to Vegas before. Kiko had never been. So I think it was kind of like he was a bit blindly led into it. Yeah. How does Chef Kiko differ from other chefs that you've worked with? Because I think just from a viewer perspective, Kiko has a bit less of an ego than perhaps we've seen in other chefs. So is that a big difference to you? Complete opposite sides of the spectrum I mean Kiko has just got a very calm nature and he's just very open to you know to help and opinions from other people within the team which a lot of chefs do not entertain whatsoever it's their way or the highway so I think Kiko is very different in that sense. He's just very calm, you know. He's like an easygoing guy. I don't know. I don't know what how how much more to explain it. He's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's just nice. Really nice. You just want to um, pinch his cheek. Like, you do. You want to pinch his cheeks and give him a huge cuddle. Really. He's just <laughs> oh, and watching that that episode back back really just like broke my heart. <laughs> yeah. I felt so bad for him. I know. Another person that you're very close with on the boat is Malia. The two of you have gotten very close mm -hmm. since your first season working together. So how have you seen her change over the years? I mean, I think Malia has really, you know, grown and matured, not only like as a person. I couldn't be more proud of her. I think she's really killing it in the in the yachting game, especially in the, on the deck side of things. You know, it's not often that you see 
young girls getting to you know, the milk needed side of the industry. And I think she's really just put her head down and, you know, got to where she's got, like in, in such a quick amount of time, you know, she's persevered and I'm really proud of her. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, she is such a boss this season. And like we saw her, you know, taking off her mic, jumping into the water to rescue the guests and everything. And I'm just like, oh my God, like she's so badass. I'm obsessed with her. She is. She's so badass. And I think that's like, you know, it's just so cool to see to see your friend and be able to work with her again, which is awesome. Yeah. What can you tell us about her boyfriend, Tom? So Tom is awesome. The, the funny story is my, my sister actually hooked uh, Millie and Tom up, which oh. is quite fun. <laughs> They're all working on the same boat together. So Tom's awesome. He's, uh, he's a really nice guy. How is he different from some previous gentlemen that she's been involved with, like Wes or Adam? I mean, Wes is such a lovely guy and he is one of my good friends to this day you know adam i don't speak to at all i don't know how to compare the two tom's a very like easygoing guy he's you know he's awesome he's funny he's british so he's got a great sense of humor <laughs> right and i think him and malia balance each other out really well that's good yeah i'm excited to meet him because i know that he's coming to visit we're very excited to meet him all the pictures that we've seen right. so far he's very cute so i'm very excited to meet tom yeah no i think i think you will be and i think you'll be pleasantly surprised he's lovely Okay, great. So you mentioned that you're still very close with Wes. Are you friends with any other Below Deck or Below Deck Med cast members? I am. I'm still obviously in touch with Max. You know, I've chatted to other cast members from other seasons, the Caribbean season, you know, just via social media, but not really like friends, friends. Now, thinking about if there were to be a Below Deck Med reunion this season, is there anything that you feel like you need to settle with somebody else on the cast? I don't know. I think if anything, I would kind of probably want to like speak to Kiko and let him know that I was always there to try and help him and, you know, not to make his job job or life harder in any way I think yeah. you know out of everyone that would probably be the person I would kind of want to you know have a discussion with just because I think he had like different uh, perceptions of me and I think that kind of swayed his mindset and in our work relationship so he'd probably be the one that I would want to clear the air with the most mm -hmm. I think that makes sense yeah I mean I'm hoping for one so I because I love this show and I think this is such a great season and I just feel like we need to wrap it up with a bow by having a reunion. So fingers crossed on that. To wrap up, I do have a few fan questions that I got from Instagram that I wanted to ask you. Awesome. Okay, so Ashley Catherine 82 asks, what is your ultimate dream job or goal in the yachting industry? So my ultimate dream dream job or goal in the yachting industry well i mean in terms of like working my way up i'd probably want to work my way up to a purser which is higher than a chief stew and they work pretty much hand in hand with the captain just on a higher level so that would probably be that and then yeah i don't know <laughs> What are the goals in the yachting industry? I think, you know, I've che checked a lot of the boxes already for what I was wanting to achieve. So I can only go up from there, which would probably be the purser role. Right. Well, and so then maybe building off of that, are there any particular places that you'd like to go that you haven't visited or, or worked at in yet? I would love to go to the South Pacific or get on a world, world traveling yacht and, you know, go up to Alaska, to Panama, but I would love to do the South Pacific. That sounds beautiful. That sounds lovely. The next one, Zickman Freud asks, what would surprise people the <laughs> most? <laughs> Good one, right? I like that name. <laughs> what would surprise people the most about working on a charter? That's a tough one. Well, I think every every charter is different. And so, you know, it, it's kind of... It's kind of a hard question, to be honest. Yeah, what would right. surprise people the most? It's tough because, right. um, yeah, I don't know. You get new groups of people. I think, I think if I to say what's the most challenging part of, you know, being on, like, chartering is mm -hmm. just like, anticipating all the provisions for the guests that you're getting on board because, you know, like, not to, I don't know. I don't know what to answer that question, to be honest. I'm absolutely lost for words, which is unusual for me. <laughs> wow, we stumped Bugsy, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> you really have. The most surprising thing, I, I don't know.
<laughs> right. Well, I mean, you know, I think the most surprising thing is that it's full of surprises, right? I mean, you never really know what I you're going to get. I think that's a good answer. Yeah, and it's definitely full of surprises. Yeah, there we go. We worked on it together, see? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I'm breaking into sweat chat thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this last one might make you sweat too. Hey, Marie McPhee asks, would you rather work with Hannah and Captain Sandy again or try your hand with Kate and Captain Lee? <laughs> I would work with Sandy again. I don't think I'd work with Hannah again. I would love I would love the opportunity to work with Kate and Captain Lee. I think it would be a different experience. And I'm always for new challenges and, and new experiences. So that would be really fun. There you go. See, I think that's a great answer. You didn't break a sweat at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. That was an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bugsy, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to interview with us today. I know you are in the middle of a hurricane and you have some <laughs> charter guests to drop off. So thank you so much for, for chatting with us. Thank you so much. It's been awesome. So thank you for joining via phone, Skype, Daily Dish podcast. It's Alex Radcliffe, everyone. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? Good. What is it like to be a Bravo celebrity officially? <laughs> still hasn't hit me yet. It's still a surreal uh, kind of feeling. Uh, it hasn't hit me. I don't know. It's uh, it's still weird because if I still see people, they they talk to me about the show. I'm like, wait, you watch that? It's I don't know. I feel like I'm in my own little my own outside little bubble right now. That uh, but it's good. It's it's exciting. Has it helped with the ladies? It has helped with the ladies. I will say. I mean. But it's it's tough, you know what I mean? It's it, in a way I like it, but a way I don't like it because if a girl's gonna talk to me or hang out with me, is like, are you hanging out with me because who I am, or is it because you like the show? So so that's like a little mental trigger I think I have right now. So is it part of your Tinder profile? Yeah, you know, I've never had a Tinder or Bumble or anything. Or like, anything? How do you meet girls? What do you meet them at bars? You, you just gotta spit some game a little bit, and, and that's it. I've I've never I've never picked I've never DM'd a girl in my life. If they re, if they reach out to me, I'll respond. I've never used a social media for anything. Wow, you're you're like a unicorn. Yeah, I know it's not real, right? No, I like it all, <laughs> I like it all natural. That's it. Yeah. Well, I want to know. Speaking of ladies, what was your first impression of Bugsy? That she was a she was a beautiful girl. And okay, what what I really what I really like that she comes on board. She's wearing this kind of a ridiculous jumpsuit, but <laughs> but it's she's you could just tell off the bat she was just a bubbling and like she was her own person. Like she wasn't trying to be someone else. And like that was very clear to me right away how she talked good people's person she was uh so so that definitely caught my eye her personality right away for sure yeah and then you guys finally got your first night out and you like kind of got to spend some time together and it feels like you guys had a lot of chemistry yeah i mean looking back at it yeah we definitely did do i do i remember it <laughs> not, really, <laughs> not really that much i remember the dinner everything was good we were having our own little small combos and and uh, it was good kind of just actually talk outside of work. And then it all started going downhill when we start alcohols involved. Next thing you know, the lights are flashing in the club. You don't you don't even know your name anymore. It's, but yeah, we, <laughs> we had a good night, it looked like. Ended with a kiss on the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, ended with a kiss on the forehead. Is that your go-to move? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm like... I'm so glad, like, drunk me has, like, a little conscious of, like, be, like of who I am. Is like, I would never put anyone, especially us drinking, like, I, 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 would, I wouldn't go in for a kiss or anything like that. Or especially if she's in her room, I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. So she, she, she told me to give her a kiss on the, on the forehead. I was, okay. Like, you know, if, and my mom told me, if someone tells you to do something, go in safe to doing it if you feel okay with it. So I guess in that moment, I felt okay to go in to give her a kiss on the head. And I left, left her room and woke up with a mean hangover. You know, this season has been really interesting to watch. And I have to wonder, watching back, especially these last couple of episodes, were you aware of how crazy it was getting between Pete and Malia and Bugsy? So with... Pete and Bugsy, I never even knew like that. Well, 
she mentioned something that he's being creepy, but like, I never knew it was that, you know, that extreme, which, you know, she was, had all right to do what she did, tell Malia. And with Pete and Malia, yeah, I saw them, I saw Malia's face, her facial reactions a lot when Pete would do things or, or, you know, say something under his breath or whatever. I, I, I saw it was definitely, you know, they were definitely kind of eating each other's skin at, at some point for sure. Would you say that it's more typical of working on yachts, that kind of, like, you know, that kind of behavior? So with the behavior on deck, um, yeah, it, it, it definitely becomes a um, an, an ego thing, I would say. It's, you know, like some people might think they're more in charge of the other person. You know, some people think that they've been in the industry longer, so they think that they should be, have more say. So, so yeah, I, I definitely see that a lot. And in most boats, bigger boats, you see, you know, people attempting to flirt, you know, it didn't come off the right way into a healthy flirt, but, you know, you see it a lot. But did his flirting work with Lara? They were still talking on the phone. I guess it worked for Laura. They're still talking. So clearly they had the same, I, they're the same the ty same type of person, I, I guess. Uh, so I guess it worked on her, so. I know that so much has already happened this season. Would you say that off camera too, like your experiences on boats has been just as dramatic? Oh, 100%. Really? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you see, you see just real emotions flying. That's what I can say. Like some people try to hide their emotions being on camera and don't want to come off crazy or whatever. And, you know, they get to the point that they just can't hold it in anymore, no matter what. And then you in real life off camera, you just see the crazy, the screaming, the weird behavior. Yeah, you, you see it all. What has it been like having Malia as lead lead bosun unbelievable i think malia is outstanding at her job she is she just so good at you know talking to us you know she has three guys she has to deal with for three complete different personalities and she finds that middle ground in all of us how to be you know just a good leader and, and we don't take her lightly so and she just she's good shit. she's funny she has good personality so it, it it was just fun it was good to work with her i had a good time with her for sure what are your thoughts on Captain Sandy? Yeah, Sand Sandy's a good person too. Sandy, she's 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 strict. You know, she she wants everything done and and kind of in a properly way. We're on a mega yacht, and that's how most captains are. But she's she's also, you know, I don't know if it shows or not, but she would come down to the crew mass, eat eat ice cream with us, talk and. She was, she was a good person, too. I like Sandy. What were your thoughts when Rob and Jess sort of started getting into a relationship? Yeah, I was happy for them. I mean, Jess, Jess would ask me, be like, hey, like, you work with them outside. You know, what do you think? I'm like, I think Rob's a, a great guy. I think, you know, he's a gentleman, and and you should. And, they, and they're very both deep people. Like, they literally are, like, Joe on. Like, their brains just work in a different way of getting, like, their deep thoughts and one another and all these different signs or whatever. So I, I, I think they were a perfect match. But does it ever get messy for those who are just on the sidelines watching, but also working on the boat? Like these, uh, these boat manses? The only way that it becomes messy is if, if you don't take work, you know, work is one relationships are two. So if you don't take that in account first, then yeah, it gets messy. People get frustrated. Oh, like these people are acting like this when we should be doing this. So yeah, but I mean, it's if you find the middle ground of you know work and play, it's it's fine. Unless you're a jealous person and like someone else, that it might not work. So and you knew Jess. You guys worked together before this. Yeah, yeah. So me and Jess worked on a boat in uh, West Palm together, only for a few months. So. I worked with her for like under two months and um, yeah, she was super chill. Just, we kind of, she kind of kept by her business to herself, kind of quiet, but she was a fun personality to be around. Yeah. Uh, what has been your worst charter experience? The guests showed up to the boat and the boat wasn't ready because the captain didn't, um, didn't put the boat first and thought he could wing it. And the guests walked on the boat. And after 20 minutes, they walked right off the boat and said, we're not doing this charter. 
this boat's a shit show. So that's definitely the most uncomfortable situation I had going into a charter. Yikes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just like it, they thought it was too chaotic? Yeah, the, the boat wasn't even, the, there wasn't even power on the boat. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That kind of takes away from the experience. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They yeah, try to get the boat fixed last minute, and they were arriving, and then just try to just try to fix it while they got on. It's like they have to use the bathroom. They got to do shit. So it was, yeah, uncomfortable. But And what about outrageous charter requests? We've had we've had the crew do a few lap dances, strip a little bit, um, play a little magic mic to the uh, birthday girl or whatever. Yeah, I'm the first one with the shirt off for sure. But you gotta let the dad bod hang out and just <laughs> let it go. Is it requested or you just volunteer? Oh, it's I, I, I you have to you have to play the character somehow. So so it's not requested, but I I go the extra mile. I, I'm a good person. Yeah, <laughs> that's just what you do, you know. Yeah, pleaser. All right, I need to know who do you think is better at their job, Bugsy or Hannah? I think they are two different type of stews. I think Hannah is more stern and and is just like kind of just get your fucking shit done like now. And Bugsy is a little more relating to, you know, maybe to the crew, crew members or or to the the clients that she has a different type of twist to it. I, I think they're both good. I just think they're just complete two different styles and it's hard to judge. It's very diplomatic of you. I appreciate it. Who have you been talking to the most since the season ended? I don't know. Uh, I talked to Rob a lot. I talked to Jess a lot. I talked to Malia this morning, Kiko last week, Hannah last week. I don't know. I, I, feel, like, I feel like everyone's in touch with me and I'm always, you know, they'll call me, I'll call them, FaceTime, bull a little bit. But I talked to Malia and Rob a lot and Jess a lot. Those three, I guess. You're just a popular guy. I get it. You know, it's, they need advice, and I'll just give it to them, all right? Lastly, I just want to know, are there any moments that you are nervous to see coming up? I'm not nervous. I'm very, I'm intrigued to see what happens with me and Bugsy, kind of how that plays out. Because I obviously know, you know, how it went, like, 24-7, but I'm curious how, how in an hour span how things look, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's 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 going to be interesting, and and see how, you know, how I acted in certain moments, how she acted, how how things really were when I, you know, wasn't around. So yeah, I, I'm 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 very curious, very curious to kind of see what happens. Well, I'm curious too, and I can't wait to watch the rest of the season. Oh yeah, I can't wait either. <laughs> From what I heard, it's it's the it's going to be the most drama season of ever and below deck so it's gonna be uh it's gonna start spicing up soon whoop, whoop. thank you so much for joining and doing this i really appreciate it thanks for having me all right guys we are here with one of my favorites this season jessica moore from below deck med jess what's up hi oh my god i'm one of your favorites that's just made me blush. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Yes. No, I mean, I just from the very first episode, as soon as we met you, I was like, okay, she's pretty. She's tattooed. She's cool. I like her. <laughs> Yay. Well, first of all, I have to ask, how is your finger? Uh, you know, it, so it's better. But honestly, a week ago, it actually because I'm on charter right now, it actually started bruising up again. So I don't know <laughs> much about how things break. But ironically, as it was airing, my f finger started bruising again. So oh that my god, that's so weird. Weird, yeah, right? super weird. Yeah. It's like witchcraft, <laughs> some kind of like it I don't know. Kind of felt like yeah, we won't go there right now, but it was a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go back to the beginning of the season. What was your first impression of Laura? Laura or Lana? No, I'm kidding. I, I wasn't sure. She seemed okay. I, w I just wasn't sure. We didn't, it wasn't like, you know how some people you kind of have that instant click with? Mm -hmm. And we didn't really have that. So yeah, it was, it was just like, a, I just didn't know. Witnessing how she was with Hannah, were you just like, totally taken aback by their interactions i mean oh my gosh i didn't see that obviously right and hannah had she told me about it but i didn't realize it was to that caliber i didn't realize 
And I was still learning Hannah, so I didn't know if she was exaggerating or not. But honestly, she told me, and I was like, oh, wow, okay. And then watching it, my jaw just dropped to the floor. Right. Like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so. I think you were not alone in that. I feel like all viewers were just like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is really happening. Yeah, 1,000%. Me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you worked with Alex on a previous charter, so you knew him going into this, but did you guys, like, ever have a little romantic thing? Oh, my God, no. I love <laughs> Alex. You know, you get thrown into charter, and I think you automatically categorize people, people, and he was straight into, like, I'm burping around him, my feet, talking about stinking, not showering, and it just went into straight brother-sister mode. Right. And, you know, me being a wing woman for him and vice versa. So we kind of just created that bond where he's like a brother to me. Nothing okay. romantic ever. So that's interesting. You say like wing woman and like whatnot, because <laughs> now when Bugsy came into the picture, the two of them got really flirty. So were you surprised at that? I was. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, but I, I was, but I wasn't. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit. So given, <laughs> given that you had been a wing woman for him previously, did he have like a certain type that he was maybe more into and then like Bugsy came in and she was just very different from that? I don't know if Alex has a type. He has more of like a... Like an, well, like an energy, his type is like an energy, you know? So I guess that's a type, but it's based more off energy, not looks or, or things like that. Well, no, it's funny because I did actually speak with Bugsy earlier today and we were talking about, you know, their flirtation and how it's kind of, you know, cutesy and just yeah. sort of fun. And it's, it's kind of light. Whereas like with you and Rob, it's sort of a lot heavier and more emotional you know it's just it's there's a big difference between the two yeah I mean I think that the relationship is like this flirty fun light type of situation right like oh yeah. you're cute let's flirt we have fun together I think Rob and I are more we're more of like uh we couldn't help our emotions and feelings and like this insane connection I've never had with anybody type of thing and right. it was just like on a whole different level that we didn't even want to go to, but couldn't resist type thing. Yeah. Well, you know, you mentioned that you spoke to your spiritual therapist and that <laughs> conversation basically manifested Rob. So, you know, before we get into too much about Rob, can you tell me what a spiritual therapist does? I, I love that you picked up on that because a lot of people haven't. So a spiritual therapist to me is like a therapist, but not the normal textbook therapist. So for me, I love psychology. So I, I, I try to be specific with where I'm describing my advice from. So yeah. the spiritual therapist is somebody that is more in tune with like energies and more a little more eclectic and less textbook, if that makes sense. Like they have the knowledge and the qualifications, but they're not like, oh, you need to be on this medication. They're more like you need to go meditate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So Yeah, he was just like, you know, I feel like a lot of normal textbook therapists wouldn't be like, oh, you can manifest this person and write down what you want. And, you know, that will happen. And honestly, I literally, I have the journal somewhere, which is kind of wild. I wrote it down. I wasn't specific enough, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote it down and it, it, like it, it all checked off. It was, it was really eerie. But yeah, that's what a spiritual therapist is. Somebody that's more in tune and less clinical. Yes. Got it. Okay. So I mean, <laughs> Well, it's even, you know, we, we talked about it on the podcast that it, it feels like maybe it's a little bit more like more along the lines of a life coach, like someone who's there to really examine the full picture and like guide yeah. you through how you can just sort of use the tools that you have to deal with what you're going through. Yeah, it's like a life coach mixed with a guru. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good combination. I like that. It. So then let's talk about Rob. I mean, what is it like reliving your, your you know, I guess they call it a boatmance a lot on this show, but I think you guys have so much more than that. So what is it like rewatching this? It was more than a boatmance. You know, I've, I've been in the industry for a few years, never had one. It was something that I couldn't control or stop. So mm -hmm. I, fe I feel like in that aspect, it, it holds a little bit more weight. It was interesting because obviously I want to focus on my job and... I want to say focus, but it was something that I kind of never experienced before with him. So everything was new to me. Yeah. 
Well, what went through your mind when he said, I love you? It's killing me to see this next episode. I'll, I'll really be honest. Because my memory is pretty shitty in the first place. Right. So right. I'm, <laughs> di- I'm dying to see this next episode. What I do remember is kind of being shocked. And honestly, the thought went through my head a few times. And I think what people need to understand is like you're on a boat. So you're living with somebody. You're working with somebody. And you're spending your off time with somebody. So like mm-hmm. the normal average person would go on a date or meet somebody and even text message and whatever. If you think about it, a two week period on a yacht is equivalent to dating somebody full time. I would think maybe for four months, maybe right. six months to really be honest, six months. Cause you're working with them too, actually six months. And that has to kind of be taken into account. So you develop right. feelings fast. It's like hard and fast, right? Like. Like you said, yeah. you're with them all the time. And then the emotions, I feel like, are just like on speed. You know, they just like go and you can't yeah. really control it because you, no matter where you go, you turn a corner on these boats and they're right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you talked a little bit too about having trust issues in relationships. And I, I think it tied back to your parents' divorce. So can you talk a little bit about what your relationship is like with your parents today? Ooh, you just got clinical on me. Um, <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> did. Did you do that? I do. I think obviously our childhood has a lot of imprints on who we are when we become adults. If we don't address and and fix them right away, if we're not acknowledging them and our parents aren't as well. So I think it does have maybe a bit of, of maybe some abandonment, maybe some the need for validation or Mm -hmm. attention, like the more, you know what, not validation and attention for me, even though I I know people will laugh at that. It's more of like a (laughs) nurturing feeling. To be honest, no, I I don't care about that. It's more of like the nurturing and affection is kind of what I craved. And, you know, he really gave that to me. But I think it, it could possibly you know, you're onto something. Right, right. Okay. You and Rob talk about, you know, potentially moving in together in the most recent episode. So, I mean, I think the million dollar question is, is Job, your, you know, celebrity couple name, where do you guys stand today? It's not the best of terms for me. I think that Rob has potential to be a truly great person somewhere. We don't stand in great terms right now. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) Okay. Well, okay. So then let's think about in theory, if there were to be a below deck med reunion this season, do you feel like there are things that need to be settled with him? And would that come up in that scenario? Definitely. I think the reunion would be, you should have your popcorn and martinis ready. I teeter between, yes, I want to bring up things. And then I teeter between, I'm not trying to put anybody down. So, okay. you know, it, it's one of those where I've heard I'm not the only one. So that's where I kind of get a little spicy with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I so, see what you're saying. Yeah, it kind of gets to a frustration point of like, you know, I, I kind of feel bad for other women that don't have a voice. So it's something I'm battling. Right. Like okay. Speaking bad about people and what we had was genuine. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So I mean, that's all for me. (laughs) Right. Of no, of course. I mean, it's all hypothetical. So you at least have some time to meditate on it and think about it. And you know, you're a spiritual therapist. (laughs) Exactly. You have some conversations that need to happen before this hypothetical reunion. So it's all good. (laughs) Well, let's get into a couple of the other people on the crew. I mean, I was really bummed out to see Chef Kiko go because I really, really loved him. And I, you know, thought he was so great. So when you heard the news, what was your reaction when you found out Chef Kiko was was leaving? I was crying. I I remember washing dishes and crying. And I don't, you know, I don't really think I cry easy. I, I overheard some of the conversation when I was down in the cabins. And I could hear it from the galley. And I just remember my heart kind of sinking and feeling mm-hmm. really bad because I know he gives his all. And for someone like me, you know, I think we kind of relate in that aspect of feeling like we're really giving our all and we really care and love people and want to do a good job. So it's a little crushing. Right, right. No, it's true. I mean, it it, it is a bummer because he was really lovable. And, you know, I think one of the things about chefs too is very often they have um, an ego. 
Yeah, you know, like they're. I'll say it. <laughs> they're not the easiest, maybe, to get along with, and I feel like he yeah. was the opposite of that. You know, when he had this real, you know, passion and talent for food, and he was very well liked among everybody on the boat. So it was just like really sad to see him go. Yeah, we had a great dynamic. Me, Hannah, Kiko. I feel like we all kind of understood each other, and there was a flow and respect. I think mm-hmm. respect and care was a big thing between all three of us on that scenario well with with chef kiko out of the picture i know that you know malia's boyfriend tom shows up and kind of ends up saving the day in a sense and joining the crew so how did the dynamic with everybody on board shift when when tom showed up you know so that's a little blurry for me to be honest because that was like our first technical like our first kind of day off where we go to the beach club and we meet tom Uh, Tom's great, you know? I I like Tom. Tom's not Kiko, but that Mm. doesn't mean that's a bad thing because I was really nervous that we were going to end up getting a chef that is, like, a stereotypical chef where they're kind of difficult to work with and crazy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So far, Tom doesn't seem like that. Right, right. Well, and, you know, looking at Malia too, I would imagine that she probably, she's, she's done there, like been there and done that with some of the other chef types in the past, I think. So perhaps she just found herself a good one now. And learn the lesson. Yeah. maybe. Yeah. I, I love Tom. He's a great guy. So I don't blame her. Maybe she did find the one. I hope so. I hope so too. Do you think uh, over the course of the season, your working relationship with Bugsy improved? I think you guys hit a few rough patches along the way, but how did you feel by the time the season ended? Where where did you guys stand? I don't really have any hard feelings with anybody. So at least for me, Bugsy taught me a lot. And, you know, I think it work-wise, it went pretty fluid. I was hesitant on a few things. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's great. We actually ended up meeting up after after filming in Bali so oh wow that sounds fun do you hang out with anybody else from the crew currently have you met up with anybody else since filming well I was like as Alex keeps calling me right now facetiming me to interrupt (laughs) yeah so like I mean I talk to Alex I don't know like every other day or something I talk to Kiko pretty frequently I talk to Hannah a lot Malia occasionally you know like the 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 IG thing, you know, like comments right. on stuff, you know, with, with Malia and Bugsy. What yeah. about anyone else from like either Below Deck or other Below Deck Med seasons? Have you met any like alums through networking or anything? <laughs> I have. I just was hanging out with Kelly a little bit ago. Who else? Anastasia and okay. the sailing, Jenna, mm-hmm. obviously like Colin. I love Colin. Sierra, Sierra and... Her new fiance. Right, and right. Congrats to them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, who else? I'm like looking through my DMs right now. Right. I, we, we kind of talk kind of frequently. It's, it's, I, I really like it. They're super supportive, super friendly, you know. Yeah, but I, I talk to Jenna quite a bit. <laughs> That's great. I mean, like, those are people who will understand your life and what you're going through and your experience like nobody else will, you know. So you automatically totally. have that connection. That rapport, exactly. exactly. Yeah. We, we have that connection immediately and we understand the trials and tribulation. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so obviously this latest episode, you know, gave a major cliffhanger moment. What was your reaction when you heard that Hannah allegedly had so-called drugs on board? Confused. Yeah. From a viewer perspective, like the shock that we feel it is, you know, one thing, but to be on board with that, I can't even imagine what that must have been like for you guys, especially because she was your, you know, your boss. I don't know how much you might have known before. Did you know that she was going through, you know, anxiety or anything? Or was it just like all, did you feel just blindsided by it? Not blindsided at all. And honestly, it's something that I'm quite passionate about, to be really honest. I suffer from anxiety. So mm-hmm. when it when it happened, it put an inst- it was un- it was instantly gut gut wrenching for me because I struggle with anxiety myself, right? And yeah. it's one of those things where it's just like any other sort of disability. And your disability can be physical, your disability can be mental, your mm-hmm. disability can show up in your intelligence. Like literally, it's, there's a million ways people have a handicap of some sort, right? 
you know, we all have our own struggles. And I think something with anxiety I'm quite passionate about is that it has this stigma that we aren't capable of doing our job. And, you know, for me, it was something that it happened after the fact when the job wasn't needed to happen, you know, when, when she wasn't needed. Right. No, I understand that. I mean, I think <laughs> the biggest point that you that you raise too is sort of the stigma that comes with anxiety or people, you know, I feel like mental health is one of those things that's not really addressed as much as it should be. And I think the conversations are starting to be more public and, and in the media mm-hmm. and it, they're, they're, the stigma is starting to go away, but it still does exist. So I, I feel like it's important that you that you raise that point. It does. I, you know, and I struggled and I'm, I'm glad you asked me with that because I, I struggled with wanting to even voice my own opinion about it. But I decided, you know, a few months ago that I want to because yeah. I know so many people that DM me, message me that I'm friends with, you know, that struggle with it as well. And they feel the shame and it's not it shouldn't feel that way. And that shame also makes it worse for people. Let's end on a positive note. I know that you are on charter now. Are you off on a different charter next week? And if so, where are you going? Okay, so yeah, I've been dealing with the owners. I've been on charter. And then I am picking up a new charter on Sunday. I don't know, you know, this is charter guest. I don't know. We, you know, we might be going near Nantucket where Kelly is. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, we're just kind of bumping around between Sag, Newport, Nantucket, that whole region. And um, I don't know, that's where I'm at right now. Just kind of enjoying that I've, I think I've escaped California right now because I heard California and Florida is not great right now so i'm kind of grateful to be on a boat (laughs) it's not doing great that's right i forgot yeah both your your family are california and florida two of the not great places but you're doing good you're up you're up in the northeast hopefully it gets busier but you know everyone Uh, stays safe (laughs) yes of course wear your mask and wash your hands (laughs) and wash your hands which you should have been doing already (laughs) to begin with Okay, this was awesome. Thank you so much, Jess, for taking the time to chat with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, nine.